Hey y'all, I'm Kristen from Hammock Haven Farm. We made some hybrid mozzarella yesterday. I can't say it's a traditional method. It is a combination of citric acid and cultures. And I got such an outpouring of interest uh, through just a little video I took on my phone and put on Facebook that I decided to go ahead and show you how I did the entire thing um, as a follow-up to my 30-minute mozzarella video. Um, for this, you're going to need both a mesophilic and, and a thermophilic culture. I used um, MM100 or 101 as my mesophilic and used um, thermophilic type C for my uh, thermophilic culture. Uh, the recipe for this book, or recipe for this, is out of the book um, Mastering Artisan Cheese Making, and it's the uh, hybrid mozzarella type cheese. You're going to need uh, four gallons of milk for this, and we're going to divide it up into two batches. So you need two pots. You're going to need uh, one that'll hold up to four gallons and one that's going to hold two gallons. I've got all of my equipment sterilized here. I'm going to put my first two gallons of milk into the bigger pot. Um, this is going to receive the culture. Um, so let me add that in here. We're going to heat it up to 96 degrees, and then we'll add the culture to it. Now I'm going to add the cultures. I've got this up to 96 degrees. As always, I turn the heat off a couple of degrees before it reaches that. Um, it calls for a quarter teaspoon each of the mesophilic. So my, I know my milk usually acidifies faster being raw milk, so I'm going to do a scant quarter teaspoon of this MM100, and then I'm going to do a scant quarter teaspoon of this thermophilic type C. I'm going to let this uh, rehydrate on the surface for a few minutes and after it's done that I'm going to use my ladle to stir it in thoroughly for a couple of minutes or so. Um, once I have stirred the culture in I'm going to let this ripen for 45 minutes and then we'll get started on the other pot. Okay. Our first pot with the culture has been ripening for about 45 minutes now. Now it's time to add the citric acid to our other two gallons of milk. I'm going to use two teaspoons of citric acid, and I just got this at the health food store. Put the citric acid into about a quarter cup of cool water and let that dissolve. And then pour it all into our cold milk. Get my ladle. that in there. Once that's mixed up, we're going to combine the cold milk with the citric acid with our warm milk here with the cultures. Alright. Pour this together. that up and heat this pot now up to 92 degrees. Now the recipe tells us that our target pH when this hits 92, deg or 92 degrees is 5.1. Um, the other day when I made this I have a pH meter and I checked the recipe and it was actually 5.0 at this stage. Um, so I just took some more fresh milk and added it to this and kept the temperature back up to 92 until my pH was showing 5.1. I don't know what kind of difference that would make. So I'm just going to get this to temperature and then we'll, we'll check our pH and rent at this. And I've got the pot with all of the milk up to 92 degrees and I misspoke earlier. I said the target pH was 5.1, it's actually 6.1. That's a big difference. Um, I'm going to use my pH meter here and see where we're at. And again, I'm at like 6.0, 5.9 here. So just like I did the other day, I'm going to add uh, some more just fresh milk to get to my target pH. Um, I think if you don't have a pH meter and you know your milk tends to acidify quickly, a good way to compensate for that would be to add less citric acid. Um, but also, 
I don't think it's going to make that big of a difference. What you're probably going to look at is on the um, on the back end while you're waiting for your pH to drop so you can stretch it. You probably just won't have to wait as long as I will. So I'm turning the heat back on to get this back up to 92 since I added some cold milk and. We still acidified quickly here. We're at 5.9. I'm going to go ahead and add the rest of this half gallon. Well, as much as will fit in this pot at least. See where we are. Okay, that brought us back up to six. We're going to heat this back up to 92 and then add a teaspoon of rennet. Since I added a little more milk than we had before, I, um, I'm going to add just a little more than a teaspoon of rennet to make sure that this sets up well for us. So like always with your rennet, add your rennet to about a quarter cup of cool water before mixing it into the milk. So we will be back after this is time to set up. Um, once we add the rennet, you can see how many minutes we need. You let it set up for 30 minutes. So we'll see you after we add the rennet and let this set for 30 minutes. It's been 30 minutes with the rennet now and you see we've got a nice firm curd going on here. It's got some cracks in it. It's pulling away from the edges. Excuse the background noise here today. It's kind of grand central but I wanted to make sure that I got this video for you before my cameraman and producer and editor <clears throat> left for camp. So we're kind of in a crunch to get this done. What I'm doing now is cutting these curds into one centimeter cubes. I'm going to do a cut each way vertically and then I'm going to use my ladle to cut it horizontally. Now I'm going to do the cut the other way at 90 degrees. And I'm having a hard time here a little bit. It's wanting to drag my curds around the pot. Alright, now I'm going to use my ladle to make the horizontal cuts. Don't worry too much if you've got a few bigger chunks. Um, when we go to heat these curds up after, you can use a small knife to make sure you've got all of your pieces broken into the right size. these curds sit for five minutes now to uh, get a little solid and then we'll start heating them up. All right, it's been five minutes to let these curds set up. Now what we want to do is raise the temperature of this up to 115 degrees over a 30 minute time frame. So that's just a few degrees a minute. So low temp, low heat on here. Oops. The burner's not wanting the light while we're gently stirring the whole time. So what I'm going to work on first, is I've got my knife and my ladle, and I just want to take any of these pieces that stayed bigger, and while I gently stir starting out here, I want to cut them all into the one centimeter cubes. So again, 30 minutes to get to 115 degrees. We've gotten this to 115 degrees now. Um, we want to hold it at 115 for 15 minutes, just stirring occasionally to make sure that it doesn't mat on the bottom. Ah, it's stretchy and stuck to my spoon. Um, so I'll just stir it every couple of minutes to make sure it's not matting, and we'll see you in 15 minutes. Now it's time to let these curds settle to the bottom for five more minutes. We're still at 115 degrees. Once they've settled to the bottom, I'm going to pour the whey off to the level of the curd. I've drained my whey off to the level of the curds. Now you can save this whey and make ricotta out of it. I don't have time to do that today. As I said, my kids are going to camp tomorrow and i got other things I need to be doing. Um, I'm going to take my curds and put them in a colander and let them drain. Put the, after i got the curds in the colander, I'm going to put the whole colander back down into my pot with a lid on it because I want to keep the temperature at about 102 degrees in there so that it continues to acidify. 
and kind of rescue the rest of these curds off the bottom here. So that's going to form a big mat. Alright, let me drain this and we'll put the colander down there. Save every curd. Alright, colander is going down. Oops, making a mess. Into the pot here and put the lid on. Let me put my thermometer back in there so I can kind of see what temperature we're staying. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let that sit for 30 minutes and then we'll come back and check it for stretching. Uh, last time it took about two, two and a half hours until it was ready to stretch, but I will give you an update and we'll, we'll go through that. It's been 30 minutes now. I'm gonna go ahead and flip this curd here. Pull it off my cheesecloth. You'll see it's formed a big mat. I'm just gonna flip that around and put that back in. Um, I'm also heating up a little pot of water here to 180 degrees. Let me put my thermometer in there. Once that's 180 degrees, I'm gonna pull a little piece off of, of this uh, chunk here and test it and see, see if we're starting to stretch at all. Let's pull a little piece off of this curd. I'm going to take a little chunk like this and drop it in my water. It's only been half an hour. Like I said yesterday, this took me, oh, it seems like two, two and a half hours. But I'm just, I'm waiting for it to soften in my water here. Okay, this is hot. Well, I want you to look. I'm actually getting a pretty good, a pretty good stretch on that. You see that? And it might have taken less time because, like I said today, um, the pH got a little lower faster than yesterday. So that's actually looking pretty good. I'm going to tasting pretty good too. Um, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to check the pH on these cards, and then I'm going to heat up a big pot of water and see about, see if we can stretch a bigger amount. Alright, my sample stretched pretty well, even though this hasn't been sitting as long as it was last time. So I'm going to try just a chunk of it to see if a bigger piece is going to stretch right. I'm going to leave the rest of it in here, that way if it doesn't work right, we can come back to it. Take your curd mat and mill it into about one inch cubes. I've got a pot of water over here that I heated up to 180 degrees. I'm going to put our cubes down into that water and let them melt. Then we'll see if we can get this stuff to stretch. Um, I have a pair of I can reach in my cabinet here. I have a pair of these te high temperature gloves, uh, like these, and they're insulated on the inside, but they're basically worthless for this because I don't have enough dexterity to work with this. So to protect my hands, I'm just using a pair of rubber gloves, like just plain old like latex gloves. And I've got a bucket of icy water here so that if my hands get too hot, I can just dip them down into that ice water. So I want to give these a few minutes to get nice and melted. I'm going to try doing some balls first. If that works, we'll try to do some string cheese. I've never done it before, so we'll see. Alright, let's see how we're coming along. It seems to take a, a few minutes for this to melt in here. It's getting melty, but I need another Another minute or so. Right, I think these are melty enough. So first thing I'm going to do is dip my fingers in the cold water to get them nice and cold because this is hot. Um, I heated the water to 180. It's at like 173 right now since I added the curd. I'm going to pull up a mass of these curds. Yeah, it's hot. Hot, 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 hot. And work fast. Um, 
And as you see, they're stretching for me. Um, I might, I think I stretched a little bit farther yesterday, hard to tell, maybe not. Um, I just am going to work this until I've got a nice smooth edge on it. And I don't really know how long I'm supposed to work it. Somebody mentioned that maybe I didn't work it long enough in the last video. It turned out delicious, but we'll try pulling this a couple more times. And there we've got a pretty edge, so I'm just going to fold that around. And kind of seal it up on the bottom here. Note to self, don't do this over my stove, I'm making a mess. All right, there we go. I'm going to plop that into this cold water and let's mill up the rest of these curds and get them melting too. Okay, let's try stretching another one and maybe we'll try rolling out a string cheese and see how that goes. All right, it's going to be hot so I'm going to put some cool water in my hands. That looks like about a good size. Alright, I just kind of want to mush it all together and start stretching her. If I had a bigger chunk, I could probably stretch it farther. It's also harder to work with a big chunk. Before that cools down, make a ball out of it, seal up the bottom, and dunk it in my water. Let's try a string cheese and see how that works. This might be a total failure. Now they said to stretch it and then I've got a cutting board over here. I'll just move my slabs that I haven't milled yet and roll it into a big snake. Once you roll it into a big snake, it's said to cut it into the lengths you want. Man, gotta work hard, work fast here. All right, here we go. This one's nice and hot. It's stretching really, really well. And burning me to death. All right. I'm going to stretch this over my cool water bowl <laughs> so I'm not totally killing myself. All right, let's get it nice and long. Let's try to roll it into a snake now. And move these slabs aside. Let's try to get this about string cheese width. Maybe I'll make three string cheeses per. I'm going to have to cut it because I'm running out of space. It's getting a little thin there. Hmm, this is going to be interesting because it wants to flatten on the side where it's laying down. So I think I need to dump them into the cool water once I get them around to keep them from flattening out on one end. I'm just going to throw my snakes in there, roll them around, and throw them in. We'll cut them at the end. Get, show you one more here. I've got some more curds stuck down in here. Yeah, I think I do. Uh, nope, not enough. Oh yeah, I do. There we go. I think the tricky part is, is when you get 
handful of it and you gotta go fishing for more. Ooh, come on. Set that over there. I'll get this other bit out. I see it, but I can't get it. You might be getting tired of watching me stretch. I don't really get tired of doing it though. Make it nice and smooth. Have a nice smooth edge on it. That's a pretty side. Roll it around. All right, and we will be back after I get the rest of this stretched and talk about salting. I left these in ice water to cool for a little while. Now they're cooled down and it's time to brine them. Um, I made this up the other day and I just saved the brine instead of dumping it out. It is half a gallon of water mixed with 13 ounces of kosher salt for a heavy brine. And I brined them last night for about two, three hours. Um, these balls are gonna need closer to the three hours. The uh, string cheeses, since they don't have as much volume to them aren't going to need that much and I don't want them to get too salty. So I'm going to dump these in here and I'm going to check the um, I'm going to check the string cheeses after, I don't know, an hour or so and see if they're salty enough for us. But I don't like to have to throw away that much salt every time so if you keep your brine in the refrigerator you can reuse it. Sometimes you might have to add a little more salt to it just to get the uh, salinity back up. All right, let's let those brine and we'll come back and cut one, see how it worked out. One, we've got one out of the brine and this is actually one from yesterday. I'm cheating a little bit. But you see, it's just beautiful texture. Absolutely delicious. And this is one of my string cheeses. And look, it's like real string cheese. Your kids are gonna love it. So, let me chew and swallow. And that's how I managed to get goat milk to turn into beautiful mozzarella. I hope it works out for you. Bye.